Now in recent weeks we've seen a couple of product releases that I think are pretty special in terms of irons. One's from Mizuno, one's from TaylorMade and before I go any further let's take a look back at what I have to say of both of these irons in their respective reviews that I've carried out in the last couple of weeks. Well, what is it you're looking from uh, for the perfect iron? Uh, so we're all going to probably want different things. So profile is something for me that's really important. In other words, how it sits behind a ball, how that top line looks, the width of that sole. Um, that's, that's a key thing for me. The offset thing, again, I can't notice any of it, to be honest with you, on this whatsoever. Uh, it's minimal offset, as they'd say. But that, again, is something that ticks a box for me. Visually, I like a club to look nice in the bag. I like a bit of shiny chrome. Um, next on to performance, I want a bit of help. I want a bit of forgiveness. So I'm asking for um, a small profile, but give me some forgiveness. Give me some fastball speeds across that club face to help with some off centre strikes. And then the last thing I'm asking for is I want feel. And whether that be sound, whatever it is that you determine feel to be, I want that soft feeling ideally of what I get from a forged iron. Now for me, honestly, TaylorMade in this P790 set have ticked every one of those boxes. Who oh, no. Oh. Okay, first ball, so let's not say too much. Oh my word. This is, this is a different animal altogether. Let me go and collect some data. Let's have a sit down. Let's analyze the data, see where the differences are, at least in terms of numbers. And I'll give you a, a more considered evaluation because I'm a little bit excited at the minute. Oh my word. I don't need to do an evaluation. That is one of the best irons I've tried in a long time. Seriously. Right, I think let's start this off. We're gonna try and structure the review in sort of different segments in terms of this comparison. I'm gonna start off with how these things look. This is gonna be my opinion of how these things look and I think that's a really important thing because it's, uh, it's each to their own. But first of all, look at this image from above the two clubs so at address effectively and this is the first noticeable difference there is a more compact look about the p790 so overall profile and that top line is without doubt quite considerably thinner than what i had imagined to be quite honest with you so basically i reviewed the hmb in the last week or so and it was about three or four weeks ago when i did the p790 and if I'm honest with you, I thought they were very similar in profile, but when I've put them head to head this morning and laid them down, there is quite a big difference. To a lot of people, that won't make any difference whatsoever, but to others, that might sway them towards the P790 for that smaller profile. And for me, like I said, on a personal level, I would prefer to address the look of the P790 because of that slightly more compact and overall look. In terms of how these clubs look on the shelf, I think they're both stunning in terms of visuals. I mean, I'd be happy with either of those sitting and popping out the top of my golf bag. I think they look superb, but once again, it's very much a personal choice. But in terms of looks and address, and I don't know whether you can get it as well, but certainly for me, there seems to be visibly less offset on the P790. So, first point would go to the P790 on looks at address. Not in terms of from the back side, but certainly address P790 will get the first tick in the box for me. Okay, so next up, I wanna talk about sound and feel. And again, um, very much a personal thing, but I'm gonna give you my opinion. I'll hit a few balls as I speak. And again, it's interesting for me to sort of go back and hit the two clubs side by side. And what I thought, it was quite a, Quite a sharp sound. I wouldn't, I mean, this, this is not, I'm sorry, this is P790. And the other interesting point to mention is we're using the exact same shaft, which is dynamic gold, 105 stiff shaft in both clubs. It's quite a harder sound from the P790. This is not typically, this is not what you would call a typical forged iron. Um, 
no matter what they say in terms of the faceplate on this, this is not uh, buttery soft like, I don't know whether you can hear it and pick it up even on camera, but it's quite a sharp sound. The acoustics in here are slightly different than what you get out on the course, and I must admit it sounded and felt better out on the course than what it does inside here. But it's not buttery soft, but it's got a great feeling for this type of club. So I'll switch over to the Mizuno club, and I'm gonna go, like I said, straight on from hitting that and see what happens in terms of sound and feel. But the acoustics in here are obviously the same for both clubs. So let's see what it does. There's some decent balls, and again, these again, I mean, comparing it to the MP20 Pure Blade, they're nowhere near as soft. It's not a softer feeling. It's a great feeling, but it's not pure like the, um, like the blade. Again, really nice shots. Happy with the ball strike in there. I'll hit one more with the, uh, with the HMB. Slightly off the bottom grooves of that final one. So, in terms of preference, in terms of feel, I think for me, Mizuno have achieved a better feel and a better sound, marginally. But, again, if you was to pin me down and pick which one I would choose in terms of the best sound and feel, I'd give it to the HMB, and that's a tick in the box for Mizuno. That's one all. Right, so next piece is about price, and the price comparison is a real interesting one, and I think this is where there's a big margin, and it will be interesting to see how this sort of sways people in terms of their buying decisions moving forward. Uh, the rough guide market price, looking between a few uh, different suppliers and what we're looking at here at Forgol, around 145 a club on the P790. Um, on their HMB, and again, it's been much publicized, and I've read a lot of comments about it, 180 a club. Uh, so we're talking about Great British Pounds here. That's a considerable difference. And I think it's one of the shocking things that came out of the review, uh, or the launch rather, from Mizuno, was just how much they'd hiked these prices up. And uh, I think that's gonna sway a lot of people in their decision, like I said. So for me, quite obviously, P790 gets a massive tick in the box in terms of very much favorable in terms of, uh, in terms of if you're looking at price points, then that's a huge, huge difference. Right, next on, it's the versatility in terms of being able to, what kind of set can you build? Doesn't make a lot of sense that, does it? But what the Mizuno line has done in terms of this MP20 range is they've allowed a bit more flexibility in to be able to blend sets, combine sets. So you could, in effect, get a mix of all three of these in terms of the MP20 blade, the MMC, and into the HMB. But I think there's a great option to blend in terms of visuals for me is to do this sort of MP20 HMB in the longer irons and maybe from eight iron down, you'd go into the standard blade. And I think the ability to mess around with the lofts a little bit, you could get a nice set blended together that works really, really well. That option isn't available in the P790s. But what I will say in both sets, um, the other thing, point to mention, I've not seen the shorter irons in the HMB. And I know it's a progressive profile in terms of it's gonna change shape and get a little bit more thinner top line, but I haven't seen it to hand. I have seen it in the P790. I've had the nine iron uh, in hand. And I can tell you that again, there's a great difference in terms of what they've changed in terms of the shaping and profile when they get to the shorter irons. Um, but like I said, I can't say the same of the, P of the uh, HMB because I've not seen it physically in hand. But for me, I think that I'd probably give another tick in the box to the Mizuno option because of that versatility and because of that ability to combine the set and make something very much specific that would suit your eye. Now, so far, all the opinions have been pretty much, I think, uh, could be argued a personal opinion. So your uh, opinion on price, your opinion on looks, your, opinion, your personal opinion on looks and feel is very much down to the individual. But what we can't get away from and ultimately what we want to have a look at is how do these clubs perform in the hands of the average golfer. So switch over to some C golf balls and get testing with some track man and get some numbers. And that was the thing that I did next. Um, I've got to say, I mean, first off, I think it's fair to say that on both occasions when I tested these clubs on an individual basis, I hit the ball really, really well. I wasn't hitting the ball as well as I had done on previous testing, but again, 
that's the where I come from. That's the view and the opinion of the average golfer. There are variables. But anyway, here's the numbers up on screen for you now. I'm going to start off. So we tried to sort of uh, gain uh, 10 shots on each. I think we went 11 on one of them. Um, but first set of numbers up is that of the Mizuno. Now, pretty much um, what we achieved last week, achieved a slightly higher spin number, but uh, ball speed's 121, very good, 6,500 spin on the 7 iron. Again, don't forget there's a difference in lofts on these two clubs, which I've not mentioned as yet. 168.9 carry, launching 18.4, peak height at 103. This ball definitely gets very high and up there, and a land angle of 49.4 degrees. Um, like I said, nothing too different from what I achieved uh, on the previous test that I carried out. So, over to the numbers, same shaft, don't forget, but we've got different lofts here. So we've got 34 degrees, as a, sorry, 32 degrees as opposed to 30 degrees now that you're gonna see on the P790. So here's the numbers on the P790. So, like I said, a little bit stronger in terms of loft. 122.4 ball speed, 6,000 spin, 172.5 carry, slightly lower launch at 16.8, 97 peak height, and a descent angle of 47.7. I'm gonna go straight into the numbers side by side in terms of the averages, and this is what I'll put up on screen for you now. There is literally nothing to separate these clubs in terms of performance. The difference in performance, I would think, is as simple and as straightforward as the difference in loft. So we've got that two degrees worth of difference, and for me that explains everything that we've seen in there in terms of those slight differences. So, how do you split them and who comes out on top? Well, I think it's very much, like I said, the first half of this review, the first, whatever it was, three, four categories, are very much down to the individual. Um, for me, on a personal level, I've give you those opinions. On a performance level, I think for me, probably, um, again, although I love the performance in terms of the ball flight on the HMBs, very high ball flight, slightly lower, more penetrating ball flight. And again, I know that's down to loft on the, on the 7 iron of the P790. Probably slightly preferred that ball flight. Um, there's nothing to split them. It is a very, very tough... I don't like sitting on the fence. I'd like to choose one or the other. Um, I think that as an overall package, and when you group in the price of that, then I think you'd probably sway towards a tailor-made because I think the price is the big glaring difference between the two clubs because on every other level, it's very, very similar. There's nothing to split them. I think the main point is this. As average golfers, I think these two irons will suit so many golfers, so many different levels uh, in terms of handicap category, swing speeds. I think they are so good for the game in terms of getting some enjoyment out of this game and helping us uh, enjoy hitting the balls out there on the fairways because they do nothing but help. It's very hard to pick negatives in either of the clubs. And I think that if you're looking for a new set of irons, um, then I don't really think you could go wrong either way, whichever decision you make. And like I said, I think that's a lot down to budget and what suits the eye. But performance-wise, very difficult to split indeed. Anyway, I enjoyed the test. It was great to get back because it's hard not to come in here with a sort of preconceived idea, having tested the two clubs. But I decided to try and start and hit the ball today with the swing I had today and try and measure performance. And like I said, switching literally from one to the other. Probably slightly surprised me. I thought the HMB was going to be a runaway winner after the sort of uh, the performance I had with it last week. I'd forgotten just how good that P790 was when I tested out there on the course at Conway. So yeah, it was a great test to do. I think it was a fair test to do. And I think ultimately there probably wasn't a winner. The pro I think the winner is, apart from the cost element and you shelling out, is the average golfers out there because you've got two absolutely blinding set of irons to choose from. Anyway, thanks as ever for watching. Comments down below and uh, I'll see you all very soon.